Hey guys, today is politics in East Asia. Today I am going to give you all the slides, which is something I normally don't do. Uh, so let's get into it. China. China is a unitary one-party socialist republic. It is not really a communist country. Uh, its dominant political party is the Communist Party. There's actually eight smaller parties that have no real influence. Um, some of the business in China is state-owned, but not all of it. So that's kind of what kind of makes it not really a communist country. Um, plus, it's got some other values that are very different. Um, so how members move up in this, con in this uh, communist party is uh, they have a civil service exam. It's roughly a five-hour test. Um, and there's levels of this party. And it takes 20 to 30 years to move up. Uh, their term limits are um, pretty short, and that's, uh, that gives them a 62% turnover rate, uh, which is actually a higher turnover rate than Western democracies. I mean, you think of some of the American politicians who have been in, in power for, you know, 60 plus years. Uh, so you don't really get that in, in China. Um, the basic structure of the country is you have the Communist Party, uh, the Communist Party has a general secretary who holds all power and controls the Communist Party. Uh, the Communist Party also controls the other institutions. Uh, you have the military, which is um, has a chairman of the CCP uh, slash PRC, Central Military Commission. Uh, it is the same person as the general secretary, uh, and they control the People's Liberation Army. Then you have the state and that is also ruled by the PRC, the president of the PRC, which is the same as the general secretary. Uh, so in, in summary, the general secretary of the Communist Party is also the chairman of the military uh, commission and is also the president of the PRC. Uh, and they are, and then you have in the state, you have the judicial, legislative, and executive branches, just like in uh, the U.S., now, this, the Chinese power structure is, uh, this is a good visual to kind of understand where everything falls. Uh, you can go back and look at this slide. There's also a link on it. Uh, so who is uh, this main guy, the, the big guy who's kind of over all these, these structures? You can see Xi Jinping is currently the chairman. Uh, this is him. He is, his father was a war hero uh, who fought alongside Mao Zedong, the guy who kind of started the Chinese uh, Communist Party. Uh, he was born into this party. Uh, he has uh, taken away some of these term limits that we talk about. Sorry, that was my dog in the background. Uh, he has jailed critics. He has created a new cult of personality, which is something very interesting that maybe some of you guys would like to look up. And he is considered the most powerful uh, leader on Earth. Moving on to Japan, uh, we have a constitutional monarchy. It was uh, written in post-World War II. For the record, just in case you're curious, it was very different before then, as we saw in our history sections. We have an executive branch uh, who the emperor is still in power, but he is really a symbol of state. He has very little real power, even though he does uh, have some ceremonial roles that he fulfills that uh, kind of makes it seem like he has a little more power than he does. Um, so the parliament, uh, you have people voting for the par party. Um, the party selects le leaders of that party. It's very similar to in the UK. Um, so this is uh, the two main um, houses are the House of Reps and the House of Counselors. Um, and this is uh, the names that I put right here, which I'm going to murder if I try to say, so I'm not going to try to do that. Um, so the House of Reps appoints the Prime Minister. Also, the Emperor has some impact on this. Uh, he is the most powerful politician. However, he does not have veto power like you would imagine a uh, major executive branch individual uh, like in the U.S. Um, this is actually the prime minister right here, uh, Shinzo Abe. Uh, we have the public administration, which is worth mentioning here because it actually has a ton of power in China. There was some major corruption that was uh, that kind of was it, um, uh, came out in the 90s and the in the 2000s uh it's worth looking into if if japan is your your country uh so roughly a half of the um the members of the public administration are um chosen by the house of representatives others are directly chosen by the prime minister um these are the civil service uh positions they are all experts they are the top minds of japan um 
they uh, they create 90% of legislation. They are the problem solvers of Japan. It's a very important role um, that these uh, uh, that these members fulfill. All these ministries. Uh, they are the cabinet of the prime minister, as you see in this uh, this very blurry uh, visual. Next up is the Republic of Korea. So this is South Korea. So South Korea is kind of similar to the U.S. It is a constitutional democracy with a president. Uh, it's he is the leader of the executive branch. Uh, he is, uh, or they are, because they've had many uh, female leaders uh, voted by the people. They have five-year terms. They are the only direct representatives that are voted on. Uh, then it kind of shifts away from the U.S. model, and you have the legislative branch, which is 300 members, uh, which are kind of voted in uh, by the party. Uh, but the party is, is gains its power by the number of votes by the, to that party, uh, which is a very complicated system, but you should uh, definitely do a little more research, and you'll see it's kind of interesting how that works. It's kind of a blend of the U.S. and the U.K. models. Uh, we we have a uh, judicial branch here, and it is a Supreme Court and a constitutional court. Uh, an odd thing that you do not think of in South Korea is that they do have some some censorship. Some may be uh, not really giving it as, as much importance that it does. They have a decent amount. Uh, they uh, kind of censor a lot of Japanese and North Korea sympathizers, um, just kind of considering their history. Uh, we can look at a another visual for them uh, this is the executive branch with all the members and the cabinet and such uh, you have the legislative branch which also is has the judiciary inside of it um, or along with it not so much inside and then the key ministries which were mentioned um, that fall underneath the uh, the executive branch through the cap so now we have the best Korea or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea also known as North Korea so North Korea has a mandatory voting age of 17, and they have a 99.97, I think, percent voting uh, turnout. Uh, they are voting overwhelmingly, a.k.a. 100% uh, for the current administration there or in the current parties. Uh, so just another little small detail is the Korean Central News Agency is not part of the actual governmental structure that you would assume like the legislative executive and so forth, but they do have a pretty important role in North Korea as their director general controls the media and the state-sponsored media uh, actually helps uh, propel the, the party. Uh, you have the National Defense Commission, which has the Supreme Minister and Defense Minister. The only reason uh, I'm going to really go into the Chief of General Staff is because he controls the nuclear and ballistic missiles program and plays a vital role in how we as Americans see North Korea. We also have the Workers' Party of Korea, uh, they have the chairman, and uh, that is, of course, Kim Jong-un, who runs all the other things in North Korea. Uh, also, honorable mention, as uh, you will see in one of the links uh, that I may post up of a video, uh, the chief of staff is his sister, uh, Kim Yo uh, Yong Jong, uh, and she is a pretty powerful member in the party. We have the Supreme People's Assembly, uh, which has a premier, a presidium, a chairman of um, the Supreme People's Assembly, and then the Supreme Court president. So this is a very uh, simple visual so that you understand uh, the basics of this, this party system. Uh, very similar to China, uh, the leader kind of rules them all. So we have Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. Uh, this is a, another visual of how his power is distributed throughout the rest of the nation. Um, if we actually click on this link, you'll see that I have included a very fun uh, list of titles that Kim Jong-un currently holds, as you see there, quite long. So just as a bonus slide, I want to, to make sure I include in North Korea the eternal members of the North Korean political system. So we have the eternal president Kim Il-sung, which is Kim Jong-un's grandfather, uh, and we have the eternal chairman, Kim Jong-il, which is Kim Jong-un's father. These members uh, actually still have a position in the government of North Korea, even though they are dead. Uh, which is kind of interesting, because you don't really see that uh, that often around the, around the world. Uh, so you can kind of see them as ruling the country beyond the grave. 
but in all actuality, it's kind of a uh, symbolic uh, position. Oh, well, I, of course, it's symbolic as they can't really do anything. Um, but it is a symbolic nature, kind of like we consider the founding fathers, these people who we still allow uh, what they would have done back in the day to have some influence on our politics today. Like, is this what the founding fathers had in mind when they wrote this or so forth? So it's a kind of similar um, position there. It's just a, you know, more labeled position that is actually in their government. Um, so this brings me to this week, and I kept this slide blank so you guys would focus on what I'm saying. Um, what are you going to do for your video for this week? Well, you can discuss your country's political system in a broad way. You can talk about individual parts of their government. You can talk about the current leaders of those those countries. I mean, we've got some pretty interesting people uh, to discuss, mainly Abe, Kim Jong-un, and Xi Jinping. Uh, they have done some really crazy stuff recently. Um, so and, and Moon also. I don't. I do not want to discredit South Korea. Their president is actually one of my favorites. Uh, he has done a lot to propel the um, cooperation between North Korea and the rest of the world way more than President Trump has. Um, so it is totally worth checking out those individuals, talking about them. You can discuss the systems. You can discuss maybe some fun things that you find in there. Maybe some uh, like something on the scandal that happened in early 2019 in South Korea. Uh, you can talk about uh, you know. Anything you would like to, uh, it's going to be a difficult week, so uh, try to keep it light. Uh, let's not get into any political arguments uh, or arguing, arguing over which system is better. Uh, so look forward to hearing or seeing y'all's responses in the forums. Thank you. And don't forget, please make sure you are meeting your word count in these forums. I have to have a grade uh, for these assignments, and your grade is very heavily... Uh, weighted by how many words you are writing. Uh, if you are not meeting the minimum word requirement because this class is so open in subject matter, I have to grade very harshly on that. Please, for the love of God, look at your word count. Make sure you're meet meeting your minimum. Uh, your content is important also, but because that is the defining uh, uh, thing that I have to look for, I have to grade on it. So please make sure you're meeting those. I'll look forward to your responses.